Man, did I call it or what? I got one dead one over here, and this is a ballast again, and I've got a bulb getting ready to go in this one. It's been flickering off and on. But at least the important ones over the top of the boat are brand new bulbs and ballasts, so. That would just figure, that's my luck. I totally called it. Anyhow, moving on. So I have reinstalled the gauges, the headlight switch, the ignition switch, you can see I've got the speakers installed, um, the Pioneer deck. I really didn't have to install the steering wheel, but uh, our steering wheel or helm unit, but I just like how it looks, so I did. But basically, I'm, I'm putting all this stuff in place because I'm, I have a couple of things I'd like to do this month. I'd like to start on my wiring, and I'd also like to start on my armrests. So I wanted all of this stuff in position. Up, oh, seat there the light just flickered. It's halfway out. Anyhow, I would like to start on my wiring so i wanted to get all of this stuff installed and kind of mounted where it's going to live i'll have to take most of it out again um to do my my clear coat in here whatever that's going to be but ah uh, it looks really really nice uh after it's had the epoxy coat on there so here's the uh, kicker four by sixes you can see i've got my wires plugged onto them they're not going to anything got the pioneer deck there it is. Got the Pioneer deck uh, slipped into its sleeve and the wire harness plugged in again. Not wired yet. Um, you can see the harness down there just hanging. Uh, we've got the amp reinstalled in its spot over there. Rear speaker. Basically we're just getting ready to... Uh, I wanted to locate everything so I could start cutting wires and running wires. And Of course I still have yet to pick up the wire and the marine there's a special type of of crimp connector that you crimp on and then heat and they they've got like this heat activated goo that kind of oozes out and seals the connectors up i don't know what they're called other than marine connectors but all of my connections will all be with the exception of the ones that plug onto the speakers will all be those marine goo connections i don't know what the hell they're called another speaker uh, we come forward, there's the amp, of course, another speaker up here, and I know it looks like there's not much clearance, but laying a straight edge on here, they do clear. Um, so there's kind of a look of it, with the deck installed, everything just looks super pretty, super pretty. So that's where we're at, it took me about an hour to install all of this stuff back in the boat. All four speakers, all four gauges, the headlight switch, the steering helm unit and wheel, ignition switch, deck, and the amp. It took me about an hour to install all of that. Granted, there's no wires connected to anything, but just to get them in the dash, in the boat, screwed in place, bolted in place, whatever the case may be. Well, that's where we're at, making good progress. Well, here is yet again another incredibly painful part of the boat build. We've got three holes here, 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 and here. These are drilled quarter inch diameter, and what they are, are the holes for where my pitot tube or speedometer pickup is going to mount on the back of the transom. Now the holes are substantially smaller than a quarter inch. Now, the reason I drilled them a quarter inch is because I I am incredibly worried about any penetrations in the hull below the waterline, and this is this will live below the waterline its entire life. So it is imperative that these are sealed very, very, very good. So what I'm going to do is I over-drilled them a quarter inch. The actual screw size, and you can see, is substantially smaller than the hole here. Substantially smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some thickened epoxy and I'm going to fill these entire holes. I'll use a syringe clear into the back. It's about three quarters of an inch deep. And I'll fill that all the way out to flush with the surface and I'll put a piece of tape over it. Same with this one. I'll fill them all the way up with epoxy. So that'll basically be an epoxy plug that fills that hole and then I'll drill my tiny hole down through the center of that epoxy to guarantee that it's watertight, that no water can get through a screw or around a screw. So that's what I'm doing now, mounting my pedo speedo pickup. Making fantastic progress. 
and a few tears along the way. This is, this really hurts. It's gotta be done. So, um, you can see I've got a piece up here of African mahogany. It's uh, cut, ripped four inch wide. It's a little over six feet long, and that's gonna be the vertical member that stands up off my floorboard for the vertical half of my armrest. So I just ripped that off of this beautiful piece of African mahogany, and these things are incredible. I found these at my, uh, sorry, Selena Gomez. I love you, Selena. Anyhow, um, I found these, these pieces of African mahogany. They're six foot, two inches tall, and just incredibly wide. They're absolutely beautiful. Now let's take a look here. So this one is, uh, you know, 18 and a half inches wide. There's a little damage chunk here, so let's call it 18 inches. 13 sixteenths, and they're six foot two. And the actual length that I need is like six foot one and a half. So they're, they're perfect. But beautiful, beautiful boards. You can see this one's not quite as wide. I just ripped uh, four inches off the edge of it. So this one's sitting still 15 inches wide. Beautiful, beautiful wood. So I'm working on my... Uh, Armrests now, thank goodness. Finally got some more mahogany. We're making good progress. I love you, Selena. All right, so here is the port side vertical member, the vertical part of the armrest. You can see I've got all these little blocks where it's gonna screw down to the floor planking. Uh, just got those cut and glued on. Um, here's a look at the port side. I'm sorry, starboard side, the right side. This would be the driver's side. You can see, same thing, little blocks, all glued on. Um, they are all drilled and countersunk and ready to go. You can see right here is notched out where it's going to slip over the gussets for frame two. Um, and then if we come all the way up to the front here, you can see where we're notched out here to clear the gusset on frame four. There's just a little triangle left in it. And then the top half where you actually rest your arm will go on the top of this. So this is four inches plus 13 sixteenths, just shy of five inches tall. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do, and it'll be easier to explain once I get in there and, and I can show it to you, but I think I'm gonna round over bit the entire edge or corner of the top plank that goes on there, the actual arm armrest, just to give it a smooth edge so you're not gonna you know, have it dig into your side or, or sit funny in the boat and stab you on a sharp edge. I think it, it would look good and I think it would add some functionality, but making good progress. So we now have the pedo speedometer pickup, pedo tube speedo pickup mounted to the back of the transom. Um, those are number six stainless screws. I want to say they're five eighths of an inch long, something like that. Um, and just like I showed yesterday or, or a couple days ago how I over drilled them, I then mixed up some thickened epoxy and backfilled the holes and then today that was completely cure. So I re-drilled a, a pilot hole through the center, the right diameter for my stainless screws. And I picked up this right here, which is uh, 3M 5200. It's, you can see here, it is permanent. And I didn't want to glue the entire housing to the transom but what I did was prior to mounting this I took a, a little blob and I put it right over the epoxy plug um, and then I did the same thing on this black plastic I filled the screw hole through the black pass plastic with that 5200 and then I took each screw and I rolled it in that 5200 to coat the threads of it well then I, uh, I put my screw through and got started up here, got this one started, got this one started, and then I tightened the ball down evenly. And basically that 5200, uh, you know, it's a permanent waterproof um, sealer that doesn't ever really harden, but had I glued the entire base on, you'd have played hell ever trying to get that thing back off of there. And basically I'm just looking for some added sealer or sealant around my my screws. So I am very, very confident now that that thing is incredibly waterproof. So it's got the oversized epoxy filled holes, center drilled and then sealed. Both the outside, or I'm sorry, the outside of the holes are sealed with 5200. And the threads of the screws were coated in it as well. So it should be 
should be if I did everything right. Uh, waterproof forever, hopefully. So now that we've got those three holes done and the pedo pickup tube mounted, uh, there's going to be a hose that comes off of here. It's going to run up the transom and there'll be another hole, another hole in my boat through the transom for the pedo tube that actually runs all the way up to the back of the speedometer. So another hole somewhere up in here, but making good progress. All right, so we now have our vertical parts of the armrest standing up. Um, you can see the little blocks back here where it's screwed down to the floor or the floor plank all the way down. From the inside of this vertical to the inside of this vertical, it is 45 inches on the money. So it's basically an inch and an eighth off the edge of this plank all the way down. So I started up there, I set it, measured my inch and an eighth, and again, that runs clear up to, you can see frame four, the dash. But I set my inch and an eighth from the outside of this edge, screwed that down, then I moved down again, moved the plank around till I hit my inch and an eighth, screwed it down, all the way down. Then I came over to that side, and I did the exact same thing on the port side. I set it up for an inch and an eighth from this gap over to the face, screwed it down and then I took that measurement that turned out to be 45 inches so then I moved down to my next spot my next block right here and I pushed that over till it was an inch and an eighth but before I drilled and screwed it I measured to double check that it was 45 inches because you don't want these things you know they have to sit parallel because your seat bases are going to go between them and I suppose if you were off a hair bit you could you could fudge your seat bases at an angle to make up the difference. But again, I'm trying to build this to the absolute best of my ability. So after nailing the front one down, checking the measurement, then as I moved down, I would set it to an inch and an eighth, but before drilling or screwing, double check my measurement, 45, move down to the next one, set it to an inch and an eighth, double check my measurement, 45, then I drill and screw it, move down to the next one. So those are the vertical members of the armrests and they'll be I'm getting ready to do the top, the cover board that goes on top here over to the edge of the hull. And that'll be one six foot long custom cut that has to fit the outside of the hull fairly close, um, probably within an eighth of an inch or so. At that point, there will be, um, let's see, between frame two and the back of the seat here, there'll be a upholster covered like kick panel or door panel that'll cover all that so that's you know a quarter inch thick so with if I'm within an eighth of an inch of the outside of the hull I nailed it um, and then from frame two all the way to frame four there'll be another upholstered kick panel in there that'll rest on the top of my armrest it'll touch that and run clear up to the bottom of the uh, the shear so it'll cover all that um, so long as my gap for the top of the armrest is about an eighth of an inch within the any the eighth of an inch of the hull then that upholstery will cover it up. I'm gonna to try to make it fit snug, but we'll see what happens. A little bit of a gap's gonna be okay. Making good progress. So here is a look. Gotta do a little fill work right here, but here's a look at our the top board of our armrest. And if you look down it, you can see the curve of the hull right here. This little step. This is a notch for our quarter inch butt block that's right behind our joint there where the two side panels apply meat. So that, that notch is up for that four inch butt block. Um, this notch down here is cut out to clear frame two. And then I took my awesome DeWalt router. I love this thing, love that. And I did a 3 8 round over bit just like I did um, around the, the oval on my dash, exact same bit. So, making fantastic progress. We'll get this thing test fit in there now. So here's a look at it installed in the boat now. You see where it matches up against the side of the hull. And our little round over here. And this end actually needs to be slid out just a hair bit to line up, but. So that's it. It runs all the way down to frame four. So, and I, I still have yet to do, I'm gonna do some blocking underneath it so that it has some support to sit on, but 
that's the general shape, general width, height. Let's see if we can drop down in the boat here. Yeah, there you go. So then up forward, come around the side of the boat here. So then somewhere up in here will be where we'll mount our forward reverse throttle. And then our seat, well our seat base will go right across there. Now I purposely made this roughly five inches off the floorboards because the seat's gonna be, I'm gonna build the seat base at a slight slope. Um, it's gonna be two inches tall on the rear and three inches tall on the front to give you a slight kind of reclined seating position with two inch foam on top there. So it'll be about flush up here, about five inches and slowly tapered down an inch to the back of the seat back here. But uh, this was all pre-planned <laughs> and it's turned out pretty darn good. You can see our fit to the hull is very, very nice. Making good progress. I think that round over looks really nice on it too. I'm, I'm pretty glad we did that. So, looking great. The starboard armrest is just about done. So here's a little better look of the armrest down the uh, starboard side. You can see it ends right back here where our floor planks end. And the rear seat will come right down into it nicely. And I did these again out of all one piece. It's all one piece, one for the top, one for the uh, vertical. And you know, I've seen some guys split them at this frame because it's a, it is a fitting pain in the butt. It's a fitting nightmare to get everything to, to clear right without monstrous gaps everywhere. It's tough, uh, but I wanted it all done in one piece. That's the look I was going for. So you see what it looks like. Turns out pretty good. And then somewhere right in here will be our forward reverse throttle controls and the seat base. Um, I'll build the seat base and it'll screw to the verticals and it'll also screw to the floorboards in a few places. But now we're getting ready to start the next one. Here's the plank for it laying back here. Making good progress. Well, we now have the port side armrest test fit. Um, the last little portion of video you saw there, I was running my DeWalt router with a 3 8 roundover bit so that the corners are nice and smooth. Um, but uh, that side over there took me about half the time to do as this side, and, uh, and it was a much, much better fit. Just on the very first rough cut and sand, it slipped into place, uh, which is... A huge improvement over over the first side this side over here took me for frickin ever um, so there's just again on each side there's still just a little bit of, of fit work to do um, very very minor um, and you can see I've got this block sitting back here that's four inches tall there's uh, three of them I set them between my vertical half of the armrest and the outside of the boat there they're set in there one one and one and they're the same height as this vertical member so they just provide something for it to set on squarely um, i'm actually going to put some vertical blocking on each side of this frame here and one back here to kind of make like a shelf for it to slide in and sit on and i'll do the same thing up where it meets uh the dashboard i'll put a, a horizontal piece of blocking underneath it so it lays on it like a shelf but at the moment the blocks are my spacers. So we'll come over here and take a look at it. Man, it looks awesome. Beautiful, beautiful fit. Look at the fit down the side of the boat. Just really, really impressive. Fits very well all the way down. I'm trying to get some cables out of the way. You can see how it's notched out to go around my quarter inch here, but just a beautiful, beautiful fit. So, we now have armrest. Oh, look at that. Holy shit, that's pretty. Let's come up to the top here, try not to fall off the ladder. 
So there's our armrest. Oh, gross. I got spider webs in my hair now. Anyhow, making fantastic progress. And then, uh, like I talked about, my seat base will go from uh, armrest to armrest, covering this area right here. And same for the back, it'll run from armrest to armrest. So, making fantastic progress. Man, it's starting to look pretty. So impressed with it. And again, I did, I did these, both the horizontal and the vertical of the armrest, all in one piece. There's no, there's no seam where it goes around the frame. It's all one piece, from frame four all the way back. Talk about pretty. Oh my goodness, look at that. Beautiful. So we now have, you can see here's the top of the armrest laying down here. I just slid it off out into the floorboard. Same with that side. You can see it laying right there. Just slid it off. And what I've done, you can see right here, is I have epoxied these blocks on at the exact same height of this vertical. So when I put this in permanently, it'll slide over the top, glue to it, and screw to it. So I've got one up front on frame four. Let me come back here. And I have one, hopefully you can see them, one on each side here, here and over here, of frame two. And it's the same way if you look across, you can see one ahead of frame two and one behind frame two. And then we'll go up here and you can see the final one right over there. So that, again, they're all the exact same height as the top of this. So when I slip that, that one piece, you can see where it's notched out there to go around the frame. When I slip it over the top, it'll sit on it like a shelf, nice and flush. So I pulled out all of my blocks that were four inches tall that were supporting all of that because that's what these will do. So I'm making good progress. So we've got our Gary the Snail disc sander up and running. The disc came in the mail yesterday. We'll get it plugged in. And I've got a scrap left over from the dash of the boat. You can see it's got epoxy encapsulation on one side. We'll just, uh, we'll just sand this down. Because it's 80 grit, it's super aggressive. But it does a really, really nice job sanding, so. Gary the Snail is up and running. And then something we were doing today is, uh, so, you know, we've got our blocks glued on. I slipped the armrests back on temporarily. They're not officially done. But I'm drilling holes beside my holes. More painful holes in my boat for wire run. Um, so there's one here at frame two. Uh, I don't need one here because this actually, my carling hangs uh, an inch below this frame so I can run them right in here. They'll be hidden. And then I had to put one more up here. Uh, I'm getting ready to epoxy encapsulate all these little holes. So down the port side, the left side of the boat, you can see I pulled all my wires, my four gauge wire run, disconnected it, took all my little connectors off, pulled it back through the holes because none of these have been encapsulated yet. So these are the two for the wire and then this is the third one I, I drilled today. And this again will be for my pedo pickup tube for the speedometer to come through as well as uh, my stern light and one of my bilge pump wires will run through here. So um, again, same thing. Pulled all of my wires loose off my remote terminals and drilled the third hole and the third hole back here. So I'm getting ready to encapsulate all these in epoxy so they're sealed up and then I can officially start running wires through them. Making good progress. Another little side project here. Um, for Father's Day, uh, we're building my, my dad a little memorial. He passed away a couple months ago and he was a huge Chevy fan. So I built this uh, concrete form in the shape of the uh, Chevy bow tie. I just printed it off and scaled it up, basically. Um, so, side project. So this is just a, a real quick demo of these wire terminals. I ordered these off of Amazon, and you can see they've got like a transparent coating over them. According to the seller, they're 3M brand. Uh, I don't buy that. Chances are, because they're not labeled, there's nothing in here anywhere that says 3M. Chances are they're Chinese. Uh, but they had fantastic reviews, so we're going to 
test one out real quick and show you uh, how they work. So we're going to fire up this little propane torch. And I've got one already crimped on just a piece of wire here. So we're just going to heat it up. You can see it's starting to shrink around the wire. Now the, the rumor is these are supposed to have a goo inside of them that will seep out. And it's a, it's a really nice fit. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's definitely a, a layer of like, looks like silicone or goo that squeezed out the end of them to completely seal them and make them watertight. Now something else that I also did uh, because I'm familiar with all sorts of different materials, uh, at my work the electricians have this little machine that it, it has spools of heat shrink tube that you poke into this machine and then you can print whatever you want onto the heat shrink tube. For instance, this one says battery positive. So after I shrink this onto my wire, I'll run this guy into position and then we'll just shrink this up real quick and there we go so each wire will be labeled at the end where it connects to the fuse panel or the battery and the other end will be labeled exactly the same with a matching heat shrink tube whatever material or whatever instrument or item it happens to be connected to so there'll be no guesswork when you're under the dash if you have two red wires that go to something completely different, you'll be able to say, oh, this one's battery positive and this one's, you know, ACC or ignition or whatever. So all of my wires will be labeled throughout the boat like this, all using this uh, sealed marine heat shrink connectors. So these are all of my armrests. This is the underside of everything. Um, this would be one armrest. This here is the vertical half of the armrest. And then my four floorboards that the armrest will screw to. So this is a second coat of epoxy. Um, I put them all, uh, put a coat on it, sanded it all down after it cured up. And it was nice and hot today, so it actually cured. And I was able to do two coats of epoxy in one day, which is kind of a rarity for my area. But I've got all this coated in two coats. And... Now we'll flip these floorboards over tomorrow and do two coats on the top side of them. Then I can reinstall those those four floorboards. And they're the farther, farthest out extreme floorboards. You can see now this outside one is missing. And over here this one is missing. Um, because once I install the vertical armrests on the port and starboard side, they'll be permanent these floorboards will never come out again they'll be permanently in the boat because this will be permanently glued to it and this will be permanently glued to that so these these this farthest outside floor planks will never come out of the boat again so i wanted to make sure i got a really good coat of epoxy over them you can see they're very shiny um and i probably could have left it at one one coat although they were really rough and bumpy and looked like crap even though nobody on the planet will ever see this underside of them again, it still was the right thing to do. Sand them down, do a second coat, make it nice and smooth. Um, so that's what we're working on now. We'll get the second, or first and second coats on the top side of these four floorboards. And then they can be reinstalled and then we can start permanently gluing our armrests into the boat. So making good progress. So here's just a real quick look of the floor planks um, after their second coat of epoxy. And they're, they're still very, very, very wet, uh, but you can see the gloss on them. Um, so this is the top side. This is actually a surface that you'll see in the boat. Um, without, I turned off this overhead light here. Without that light directly on them, man, they are, they are super pretty. I can't wait to see what it looks like outside and not under fluorescent light, you know, but. Anyhow, second coat, we'll let this cure up. I can get my floor planks mounted back in the boat, and then all of the armrest pieces I can start officially gluing down in place. But making good progress. So, where we are now, the floorboards, and this is all you see of those shiny floorboards, just about a, an inch and an eighth all the way down. 
but they're installed in the boat. Uh, I then mixed up some epoxy shield and I applied it very quickly to my vertical, glued and screwed it in place. And while all that was still wet and movable, I ran epoxy shield, which is just thickened epoxy, uh, down the top surface around my horizontal blocking where it sits on top and uh, also up on frame four where it sits on. Applied uh, epoxy grip all over that, thickened epoxy, stuck it all down into place, and uh, and I actually used something a little different on this that I've used before um, as far as attaching it. I used my 16 gauge brad nailer, pin nails, and put one about every three inches down the top. And then tonight, that was last night, getting all that glued in. And then tonight, I came back with famo wood, and I plugged each one of the holes. And they were, they were tiny, tiny little holes. And if you've been watching this video for any length of time, or this series of videos, you remember I did the same thing to hold my transom skin on while the glue set on it. Then I pulled them out, and there's tiny little holes. And I know where they're at, and if you really, really, really look, you can see them, but they're dang near invisible. So... Let's come up here, and tonight what I've done is I put the first encapsulating coat of epoxy on this armrest. But, there is a, about every three inches, there's a pinhole, about an eighth of an inch off of this roundover. And, <laughs> I don't see them. <laughs> that, uh, that family wood does an incredibly good job blending in with the uh, African mahogany. Um, so anyhow, there's the very first coat of epoxy on it, uh, encapsulating epoxy. So I'll let this cure up tonight. I'll sand it up and then tomorrow I'll put the second coat on which should smooth it all out, make it like glass, like the rest, like the frame, like the dash. Um, you can see right now, it's pretty rough, pretty rough because uh, you know the grain's still all raised. So we get it all filled with epoxy, sand it down flush, do a second coat on there and it's like glass. So the port or the left Armrest is completely done, at least as far as attachment. Um, the starboard side, I have not even started on. It's still just sitting there loose, not glued in place or any of that. We'll move up to the front here. And it is looking beautiful. Making fantastic progress. So that armrest over there, the port side, is official. It's glued in. It's never coming out again unless you cut it out. All right, so after a quick sanding, uh, we now have the second encapsulating coat of epoxy on it. Substantially smoother. Again, this is on the armrest. Um, but second coat's done. It's very, very, very wet right now. I don't know if you can, you can probably see the gloss on it. Anyhow, nice and smooth now. Making fantastic progress. So here's the end result of the uh, side project. We're working on the uh, memorial for my dad. We got the form all set up and poured the concrete. And I was really, really nervous how these sharp corners here and up here were going to turn out. Uh, I've never done any concrete work in my life. I've never built any kind of forms. So I had to give myself kind of a crash course YouTube tutorial on, on concrete work. Uh, again, I've seen it done you know, countless times over the course of my life, but I've just never done it myself. And it turned out really nice. Very proud of it. Here's a look at the uh, the edge, the corner. It turned out really nice. So, there's the end result of my side project. So I've done my best in the past to kind to, to kind of describe or show how bumpy and lumpy and unsmooth the very first coat of epoxy is and in this exact position here I've got a really good reflection from my shop lights to kind of illustrate that I mean it's like we're talking geez I don't know 40 grit sandpaper it's very 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 bumpy and lumpy but this is what it looks like after the first coat of epoxy when the grain's still all raised but sealed and uh, I'll just now getting ready to sand this down and I'll show you what it looks like you know, after the next, after the 80 grit sand job and a second coat, it's going to look smooth as glass. This is the uh, starboard side armrest. It's now mounted in the boat, got a coat of epoxy on it. We're getting ready to sand it up and 
Look at how bumpy that thing is, and it's all the way down. If we follow the light, hopefully, the whole thing is like 40 grit. It's like gravel sandpaper. But I'll show you what it looks like after a sand job and second coat. So here's a look at it now. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's no gloss left on it at all. Um, what I did was I took my random orbital sander, and uh, with 80 grit, I just started knocking all the bumps off. And with the first pass on that, you'll see white spots appear everywhere. Those are your high spots. So you just keep sanding until the whole thing is like a hazy, fuzzy white look. And then after I got done with that, I went over the top of it with scotch bright uh, because there's some valleys and low spots that you won't be able to sand out. So you wanna make sure you at least rough them up with some scotch bright. So that's what I did. Went over the entire thing with scotch bright when I was done. And then I wiped it all down with uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So it's, it's all clean now and it is ready for the second coat. So I'll show you what that's gonna look like. So now here's a look at it after the second coat of epoxy. And again, this is wet, but it's still gonna turn out, you can see the gloss up here. It's still gonna turn out really, really close to this high gloss. Pretty dang shiny. So, making fantastic progress. Oh, look at that. So that ugly, nasty, lumpy, bumpy turned into that. Nice and smooth. Just a little 80 grit and a second coat. Try to get some light on it. Yeah. Not too shabby. So it is officially July 1st, 2016. Uh, for the month of June 2016, we went up 33 and a quarter hours. So I think that's second or third most hours I've ever put on the boat in a month since I started. I think that's third. Yeah, that is third. We had one for 35 and a half and one for 37. So anyhow, I'm still very proud of that. 33 and a quarter hours for the month of June. Uh, we went up $248.83. Um, we bought the sealed marine crimp connectors. We bought a large amount of very, very wide, pretty mahogany for the armrests. Uh, some miscellaneous things, sanding discs. But anyhow, we went up $248.83. So that brings our, the 33 and a quarter hours, brings our total hours into the zip build up to 483 and the $248.83 brings us up to $6,179.70 invested in the zip. So we're comfortably in the $6,000 range. Um, so let's figure out where we are. So here's where we are. I've got a freaking giant mess everywhere, everywhere on my bench. Um, all over my my homemade table saw uh, the floor is a freaking mess there's extension cords and crap everywhere and epoxy and more epoxy and more epoxy and oh geez i need to clean up in here i knocked over my ashtray so there's cigarette butts everywhere this boat powered by marlboro but where we're at uh basically right where we left off that little portion of the video you can see the gloss now on this armrest uh, it is cured up so again there's you can see little imperfections here and there and here and there and this isn't again the final coat on any of this stuff this is just the smoothing coat this is just to make it as smooth as i can and i still have to decide what i'm going to use for a clear uv protectant on all of this exposed wood uh, but the armrests are officially done and in they look beautiful uh, one of the things I, I spent a little time electrically this month, all of my uh, LED strip lighting that's mounted underneath the aluminum here. Uh, let me drop down and actually see if you can get kind of a look at the LED strips. Yeah, there they are. That's them. Anyhow, so the LED strip lighting, which you may have saw bits and pieces of uh, in earlier parts of the video, was all temporary uh, wiring. All of my connections were just black taped to test function to make sure that I had wired everything correctly. So this month um, I went through and I 
cut all of my jumper wires that were really long and hanging down. I cut all those to the correct length. Uh, I then soldered each one of my connections and then put heat shrink tube over the top of the soldered connections. So they are now forever. So again, the circuit starts up there, down this strip and into the jumper wire. It jumps across and splits from, from this jumper wire, goes down to this strip and then it also splits here over to this strip across there. Then there's a splitter back to that strip, jumper wire down this strip, and then there's a jumper wire to the strip underneath the dash. So all of my connections now are all heat shrinked uh, soldered connections there forever. And I think what I'm going to do is go pick up probably a quarter inch solid aluminum tube and drill a hole into this frame, probably halfway into the frame, and then a corresponding hole across here halfway into the frame just basically run an aluminum rod across here that I can zip tie this these wires up to to support them across this span so they don't hang and like right now you can see it pulling on that connector I'd like to have it supported so it wasn't hurting the connectors but and of course I still have more wiring to run throughout the boat and it would be nice to have something to zip tie my entire wiring harness to as it crosses the bridge deck on both sides so that's where we are um, we're making fantastic progress. If you've been following this zip build from the start or within the last year, uh, you'll remember that we started the zip project July 14th of 2014. So coming up in 13 days, we're gonna hit the two year mark on this boat. And uh, I'm really, really excited about it. Um, I was shooting to be done originally when I started this boat build at about the two year mark, but on the one year building the zip anniversary video, I talked about shooting for still two years, but admitting it was probably gonna be a little bit longer. And it is, and like I've said before, I'm, I'm in absolutely no rush at all. It's gonna take as long as it takes. Um, I'm not gonna rush the boat just to get it in the water. You know, I've, I've gone this far, I've spent this ridiculous amount of money and time and effort to do the absolute best job I possibly could. I'm just not going to slam it in the water because I'm impatient at this stage. You know, it's going to take as long as it takes and I'm okay with that. So, uh, I will do an update video of building the zip, the two year mark, July 14th. So look for that. I'll have that uploaded and, uh, we'll much like the last one, go over, you know, what we've accomplished in the year and, what I've learned and maybe some tips and you know things like that so thank you for watching uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe rate and comment and we will see you on the next update of building the zip